Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be doing something manga related and we're going deep today because we're going to be going over 100 shonen manga and tearing them up in this tier list. To give you guys a little bit of context of this tier list, we're going to be ranking things in the following way. So we're going to ranking them by story, we're going to be ranking them by action, and we're going to be ranking them by if they're good all the way through or basically if they have like shitty arcs and that really kind of ruins the experience. And we're going to be summing those up into their final ranking. So a series might have S rank combat in it, but it might have a shit story, which is going to bring it down quite a bit in the tier list. This is my tier list, so obviously you might have different opinions than I do, and that is absolutely okay. Please leave comments down below on what you think about these different series and which one it is that you love the most. I'm also going to be commenting on which one I think you should watch the anime of rather than read the manga. In a lot of cases people do the opposite, but I must say there are some series on this list that are much better in anime version, sometimes because of the age and sometimes just because of the music, the art, the coloring, and the different types of motion in the series. That being said guys, let's jump right into these 100 shonen manga. Alright, starting off with Blue Exorcist. Blue Exorcist is like a son of the son of Satan is uh, born on Earth. He's a good guy. He fights against the 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 evil or or the different people in in that world. And I must say, Blue Exorcist has a very different anime than it does have a manga. The manga is definitely a lot stronger than the anime. Though I will say, I had quite a bit of fun with both. Um, from a story perspective, I don't think it's anything revolutionary. We're talking about something maybe in the B or C tier in the storyline. The combat is pretty generic shonen stuff. I don't think it's doing anything special. And from an arc perspective, it's not a very long series overall, and it kind of gets to its point, but I'd say overall it ranks around C or D. So I might move this down a little bit later as we kind of set things up as to what they represent. Okay, the Heroic Legend of Arslan has a really good story, like a really long quest of bringing this um, destined king to his uh, needed throne. It's a rather old manga, and I'd say that the anime actually does some stuff that's worth checking out. Uh, it's not overfilled with filler, which is something we always appreciate when it comes to these types of things. I'd say from a story perspective, you're probably talking about a maybe A-class story. Action-wise, I think it's probably around the B class in the action area, but if we're looking at consistency all the way through, I'd say it probably lands around the B tier overall. I think it's a good manga, definitely should be checked out, and actually most on this list are worth checking out. All right, Food Wars. The action is S tier in this one. Uh, the action obviously is food related, but it's over the top, it's crazy, it's bombastic, it's really unique. Story-wise, paper freaking thin. There's it's Dragon Ball with food, in all honesty, because basically it's the power up between fights, new combatants coming in all the time. I'd say story-wise, it's probably near the D tier, with a very paper-thin like father-son story linking it together. It doesn't mean it's not fun, but I'd say it's a D tier for story. Uh, and consistency throughout the arcs. This one, very different between the manga and the anime. Uh, the manga doesn't fall apart quite as much as the anime, the anime really falls apart. Overall, I'm probably going to land it in the C tier, unfortunately, which is a shame because I love Food Wars. All right, Chainsaw Man. I am not a huge fan of Chainsaw Man. Uh, and I'd say stick with the manga nonetheless, even though the anime is definitely doing some stuff that's fun. I don't think it quite lives up to the same level as the, the manga does. Uh, br brutal, the characters are interesting. The action is, I'd say the action is pretty S tier in this one. It's pretty top top notch. Action is S tier, I would say. Interestingly, the arcs, they don't all hit for me. I'd say arc-wise, I'd say it's maybe a B tier. And lastly, finally, story. Story is pretty interesting. I would actually rank Chainsaw Man either in the B or the A tier. I'm going to put it in the B tier just because, to me, I didn't really enjoy Chainsaw Man that much because I didn't engage with the characters. So you can put this down to it being a, a my preference kind of thing. But I'd say it's fair to put it in B or A. GTO. Okay, so the action in this one is going to be the teacher stuff. Uh, GTO is a legendary manga about a delinquent professor that kind of teaches lessons to his students. 
I wonder if they should call the Senen manga instead of Shonen. Anyway, I put it here. Too late. Um, GTO, I would say, hits on every arc. I love the story of GTO. I think it's it's just a great uh, character coming into who he is uh, and teaching his students great lessons. In a way, it's a lot like uh, Assassin Classroom. It's very, very similar to, uh, to that in regards to the teaching lessons to the students. Um, it's aged, I would say... Stick with the manga, probably, because it hasn't aged quite as much as the anime, but I'd say the anime is a lot of fun if you're able to go past the the aged art at this point. Um, I'm going to put GTO in the A tier, because uh, at what it does, it's top tier, to be honest. Kingdom. Kingdom has one of the best ongoing stories of a character rising up through the ranks. Not unique for Shonen, the character starting from the bottom and get, trying to reach for the top. But a character learning along the way, a huge ensemble of characters. The story really works for me. I wouldn't put it in S tier stories, unfortunately, but I'd say it's an A tier story. The action is phenomenal and it's kind of all the time because it's a war manga. Uh, and lastly, are there arcs that don't hit? Yeah, there's definitely some arcs that are really not as interesting as others and quite long too. I'm going to put it in the A tier, which is sad because I, when I was thinking about this, I'm like, oh, for sure Kingdom's S tier. But looking at it on the criteria that I made, I don't think it is. Kazuno Stigma. Uh, Kazuno Stigma is, well, we're talking old school here, but uh, character from the Fire Clan gets kind of thrown out and his, six, his succession... Um, because of his lack of skill, and he ends up going and learning the powers of wind and becomes this OP character, rebuilds a relationship with his previous family. The action's pretty on point in this one. The manga definitely has aged better than the anime. The anime is a little rough around the edges, which is um, some questionable uh, voice acting in some cases. Um, Casino Sigma's story, I would probably put around the C tier. The action is very like do attack other person responds with attack kind of thing so it's i think it's aged a little bit in its style i'm gonna put you down to probably the c or d tier i'm gonna put it down to the d tier i think it's still worth reading but i, I don't think it does anything particularly for nowadays quite good um no game no life definitely better than the anime version and uh the coloring the coloring alone is a reason to go for the anime version of this one so so good um what else? What else to consider? Uh, Story-wise, yeah, story. Again, these stories that are never finished, it's the same for the manga. They never really continued it or finished it. No Game No Life was one of those beloved anime when it came out, and manga as well. It's, enjoy it's super enjoyable. But they never bothered to finish the story, and that is a huge weakness to a story. I'd say overall... I'm going to put it in the C tier because a non-finished story that, yeah, I don't even know if it'll ever get finished. Uh, Demon Slayer. Okay, Demon Slayer, um, I think it's tight. This is one thing I appreciate about Demon Slayer is there is not a ton of filler. It's straight to the point. I think the anime version is, while it's extremely close to the manga, the use of color and the use of music make the anime version the definitive way to watch it, in my opinion. Uh... I think it's it's I think it's a very very good shonen. Story wise, I think it's I think as far as shonen goes, it's pretty S tier in its story. I would say though that the action no the action's on point. The action's S tier, and the arcs are on point. Oh man, I don't want to put this in the S tier, but I think on that criteria, I have to put it on the S tier. Oh man, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get so much shit from this. Oh Jesus Christ! Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, One Punch Man. One Punch Man is a. Well, you know what One Punch Man is. Why am I, why am I trying to explain One Punch Man? I would say stick to the anime for One Punch Man. Though I will say, since it's further ahead in general, like the manga is very popular, and it's <laughs> thank God for the redrawing of the series because if you jump into the way it originally looked, it had a huge fan base as to what it was, but like artistically ugh, it was rough around the edges but the the revamped one punch man releases are beautiful they're extremely well drawn and they're they're great like action wise s tier for sure story wise that's not what the story excels at to be honest it's very much a uh, monster of the week minimal character development if any character development it really is about like these scenarios kind of gintama like in, in some ways but i think gintama does it a bit better i would put 
One Punch Man, probably in the A or the B tier. I'll put it in the B tier. Uh, the action's really good, but there's no story to One Punch Man. And there's some arcs that I did not find interesting whatsoever. Oh my boy, Seven Deadly Sins. Um, Seven Deadly Sins definitely has some arcs that are very not great. The action, the action's pretty good. I wouldn't put it S tier action. I'd probably put it in the B tier for action. Uh, and when it comes to just getting to the story, I don't think it's that great. I think I'm going to put you down in the C, Seven Deadly Sins. Um, Toriko, the eternal chase for food. Mmm. Toriko is an old school manga about the chase for the greatest meal. And while I think it's aged quite a bit, it's still a lot of fun and really good. Which brings me to the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Factor. What is Factor? Get fresh, ready-made meals delivered to your doorstep when you sign up with Factor. Factor's chef-created meals are fresh, never frozen, and designed by dietitians to ensure every meal is packed with premium, science-backed nutritional quality. No more meal prep, no more dishes, and no more unhealthy fast food. If you're anything like me and you keep skipping out on eating right, Factor helps you avoid fast food and ordering in with no nonsense, delicious food that's ready quickly. Factor's menus are updated weekly and include 27 plus meals and 34 plus add on options. Choose your favorite meals or let them craft your order based on your taste preferences or meal history. So if you're looking to go on a great quest of food like Toriko, or if you're just looking for something for lunch, use the link in my bio or go to go.factor75.com and use code FACTORSE36140 for 50% off your first box. Back to Toriko though, we do have a series here that has some pretty solid action. It's aged quite a bit. The pacing is maybe not what you're used to anymore. Story-wise, I don't think it, it's kind of paper thin when it comes to Toriko. Uh, and I would probably put this around the C tier as well. From nowadays sensibilities, if I had reviewed it when it came out, it was probably far higher than that because it wasn't comparing it to all these other things. Okay, Death Note, my friend. Okay, so Death Note suffers from not ending at the point when L dies. Spoiler, sorry. It is a phenomenal manga, and I think action-wise, it is S-tier. The ability to build te tense moments in these moments of epicness is like nothing else. When it comes to the arcs, most of it is really good. It's the final arc that really drops it. I'd say, while I still enjoyed the final arc, uh, I would probably drop it down to the A tier for the final arc instead of the S tier. But it's still enjoyable because of the just the tense nature of it. I'm going to put Death Note as my first S tier manga. If you were reading this while it was happening, it was such an experience to go through, even more so when the anime came out. I think the anime does well with... Um, I think you you you're we were well served either way when it comes to the uh, to Death Note, either the anime or the manga. But I'd say, the anime has some music that's really iconic to me. But I think this is one of those ones where I'd say go go do both. It's really worth it. Boruto, oh uh, Boruto. So I, Naruto is down on this list somewhere, but I actually split them, which I did anyway. It's kind of not too fair because I didn't split JoJo, but I split Boruto and Naruto, which I think one is not fair. Um, Boruto is painful. Uh, there's some uh, I will say fight wise, there's some phenomenal fights in Boruto, top tier of the whole Naruto uh, Boruto series. Which I could say, so fights can rise up to the level of S, I would say. Story, just due to the meandering and... So, there's some twists in the story that are just not great. Some arcs that are not great. I'm going to drop Boruto down to the C tier as well. Uh, I'm actually going to drop Blue Exorcist down to D tier. I think that's fair. Uh, the only reason Boruto comes up here is like those those fights are S tier, man. Those like, some some of those fights are like the best fights in the whole series, but they don't have the emotional weight in a lot of cases that the fights from Naruto had, just because you don't care about the character, even when it's the same characters. But because of the context of the series, it just doesn't hit as much. So Belzebub, uh, Belzebub is God. This is this is old school. Um, this little demon baby creature that this delinquent protagonist has to protect uh, and is obsessed with, and it's like the building of the relationship between the two. It's a good series. It's a comedy. Like, a lot of these are semi-comedies at the same time. I'd say the action 
is maybe around this B C tier. The story is maybe around there too. Uh, I'll put Bell's Bub down here. Uh, it's one of those series, uh, similar to Blue Exorcist, that was really good when it came out, but it's kind of forgettable. Uh, help before I made this list, I kind of forgot about it. Doctor Stone. So Doctor Stone is an interesting one because I think it is a genius series. I love the um, the artist of the series because he's the same guy behind uh, Sunken Rock, which is one of my favorites uh, on the Monwa side. But Dr. Stone suffers from something for me, and that is repetitiveness. Uh, I feel that this the idea of continuously being like, we're going to, we have a problem. We're going to find, we need to build this thing. We're going to find the items to build it. We're going to build it. We're going to solve the problem. And hijinks ensue, bring us to the next problem kind of thing. And this is something that for me got a little repetitive, I'm not going to lie. And it was a little frustrating. I think the Dr. Stone manga suffers from that a little bit less than the, the anime series does just because of the presentation of it. The art is beautiful and it's definitely good. So I'd say action-wise, considering the action is that grabbing of the item and sometimes there's combat, but I'd say that's not what the story is mostly about. I'd say the action is probably in the A or B tier. It's still, it's still really good. It's well designed, well good art. Story-wise, the rebuilding of humanity is a pretty darn good story, guys. I'd say that's top A, definitely top A at least. I'm going to land it around the B tier. There's some arcs there that were very boring to me. Future Diaries. So Future Diaries um, is actually a quite beloved anime. It gets a lot of flack uh, in general, which I think goes a little undeserved in some cases. There's some, another series on this that's kind of in the same category of just this thing that has a huge fan base, but like everyone kind of recognizes it. it's not a great series. And it's mostly because of a Yandere character or something like that, and that... Well, anyway, you, you like what you like in life. Future Diaries, character that gets a phone that can see the future. This fight or tournament or combat between a couple of people that have these different instances of Future Diaries. Um, it's, a, it's a fun series. It's one of those series that's really heavily linked to its premise and its characters. So, like, it does something a little different. Death Note has this a little bit, too. It connects to a lot to its characters, but it does a lot more about the relationships than it does just about an item. I'd say Future Diaries from an action perspective is probably in the B or C tier. Story-wise, it has a nice story that follows it from A to Z, but at the same time, you have... Arcs are not a big problem in this series. I'd probably land Future Diaries in the B or the C tier. Um, I'll land it in the C tier for now. I think it'll probably stay there. All right, Rosario Vampire. I have a, by the way, I have a weakness for vampire series. You're going to see a couple of them on this list, but uh, as just I'm generally a fan of vampire series. Shoot me. Um, so Rosario Vampire, Vampire, definitely an etchy series is all hell. Uh, main girl is a vampire that likes the protagonist who's a human and she likes to take his blood and enjoy it. Uh, and it's all about like a harem and, but really the fights are pretty cool. The story is actually not that, not that bad for an etchy actually, con considering how bad etchy stories are normally. Rosario is not too bad and there's still a cute little romance kind of in this series. Uh, I would however have to rank it probably in the D tier. Uh, nothing here is like complete skip, actually I don't think anything I put on this list is complete skippable crap. Because uh, there's enough shonen out there that I could make a list and not everything was uh, was difficult that way. But, yeah, I'd say D tier. Naruto! Alright, so, the big three. <sighs> this is gonna be tough. So, I'm not gonna say what is the best big three today, but they're def they're not gonna be ranked the same way. I love, I'm a bigger fan of Naruto and Bleach than I am of One Piece. Uh, just because of my enjoyment over time and my love of focus on one character rather than an ensemble. Um... Naruto's manga is much more concise than its uh, its anime counterpart. I think, similar to Dragon Ball, the experience of reading it gets you the true story as it's supposed to be told. That being said, there's some twists to the story of Naruto and Shippuden, obviously, that came with it, that are just bad, bad choices. Like, the, the final arc, well... The final fight is great, but the final arc with Kaguya really spit in the face of everything they built up. They basically created a whole other 
realm of lore right at the end in a fight against you know I, I don't know if you guys follow this but it, when you you watch a lot of uh, when you watch a lot of superhero stuff you you get a lot of these stories that have ooh big shiny light in the sky or giant monster at the end that you have to defeat it's a common trope and that's the way it felt in Naruto uh, when you had Madara that was this amazing villain the super strong character and I think his defeat would have been sufficient to kind of close things off before they got into the Naruto versus Sasuke fight but I can't deny the fights are S tier I think the quest and the story of Naruto are S tier but it's arcs are not super consistent. And I'd say some of its arcs and the ending in particular kind of like, Ugh. but the final ending was great. I'm going to put Naruto in the A tier. I think it's a must read if you're a fan of shonen manga because, come on, it's Naruto. But uh, I, I do still think it's not a perfect series. Well, actually, nothing's a perfect series, but I'd say that it's it's just a, a shy away. But if I had an A plus rank, Naruto would be there. Fist of the North Star. Fist of the North Star has aged kind of badly. It, it represents a different time in manga, a time where it was just the manly man, the Jojo-style manly man, except Jojo has this way of doing it in kind of a tongue-in-cheek kind of way. Um, I'd say the manga is definitely the way to go for this and not the anime. The anime is so difficult to watch now for someone that's used to modern... If you've grown up with Demon Slayer as your anime... Don't go jump into <laughs> Fist of the North Star's anime. You're going to be like, what is this? Also, like, the sound effects are really weird. The uh, the voiceover is a little over the top. But if you're a huge fan of JoJo, I'd say there's something to be said there because there's, like, the DNA of it in there. Fist of the North Star, I'm going to put you down here. Even the fights I don't think are that great anymore. They're brutal, but... Okay, Kaiju number eight. One... Mention for the art, Kaiju. Kaiju is getting an anime soon, so I can't talk on the anime, but I can say that I'm excited for it. The art's phenomenal. The action is on point. The arcs right now are complete shit. Um, there's some stuff going on right now that is. It had a really good pace as a series and just slowed it all the way down, and it was like this really ruined the experience, and it really sucks. Um, that being said, the this desire of a character to get himself recognized by the girl that he cared for and wants her to recognize his ability for something he did himself uh, is really good. I'd say it's a top tier manga for the action, but I'd say Kaiju number eight, is, despite this being one of the ones I love the most right now, I'd say its story is still fairly thin. And I'll say that the arcs right now are, are difficult. So I'm gonna put Kaiju in the B tier. Ruruni Kenshin. Okay, so Kenshin, one, I'm going to talk on the anime. There's another adaptation of the anime. There's already two of them, plus a live action, uh, multiple movies of live action. Um, talking on the longer anime series, great on the comedy side. Uh, still some of the good action. The art uh, falls off after a while, but has a really cool thing when things get really serious, how it shifts a little bit in the tone of the, the art. Still top tier. Still one of the best scenes. Um, I forget the name of the guy. Sekimoto? forget that i think i'm confusing him with someone else uh but there's a guy he's up against his rival uh of the gote 13 that is uh such an amazing fight i'll never forget it uh but i'd say the ovas are the way to go for the anime for for the more serious side the manga is that more comedy side of things so i'm looking forward to see that remake the author has some scandals around him and i'll say if uh if you're a social conscious reader Look that up before reading it because it could be something that you don't want to have anything to do with. As a piece of art on its own, I think Kenshin stands as one of the great samurai manga ever written. Uh, I think the action is top tier. I think the story is really good. I think some of its arcs are weaker, though. Uh, so I will put Rurouni Kenshin in the A tier uh, simply because, honestly, the action's S tier. The story is uh, A or S tier, probably. Uh, particularly when you look at his background and what brought him there. So, so good. But then if you look at the arcs, there's some definite weakness there. Okay, Soul Eater. Soul Eater is a manga series. Oh, the ending in the anime is n frustrating as all hell. The manga's ending is much less frustrating. That one as well is supposed to get a remake, which I'm, I'm kind of excited for. I hope they do. Um, this one and D. Grayman that's later on this list are these things with these kind of dark flavors, dark art styles that I really enjoy. Uh... It, it's unique in it in its nature and the fact that the main character transforms into a weapon 
which I don't think that's entirely unique, but it's definitely really cool. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. Soul Leader's action is, I'd say B tier in the action category. Story-wise, it's, it's, it's skewed a bit younger. Despite a darker tone, it's skewed a little bit younger, which means its story is a lot about friendship, confidence, like things of the sort. But there's definitely some really dark tones which would lead to it being a like a darker series than it is. When it comes to the arcs, I'd say, yeah, there's some stuff that's not as good in this. Uh, anime versus manga, I'd say stick with the manga, to be honest. So, But I would put Soul Eater around the B tier for sure. Okay, so Ushio and Tora is another manga that has aged so much. Uh, like, the manga is still beautiful. If you look at the art, it's really well done, well designed, and stuff like that. This, um, this friend that's a beast, story-wise, it's, it's not bad. It, it's got some solid action in it. I think, again, these are stories that have aged a little bit from the complexity of their stories or the relationship complexity that I think has gotten better over time in most of the manga. I put Oshio and Tora probably around the C tier. Um, I think it's one that's skipped by a lot of people, and maybe you should check it out. Ah, uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Do you check out the anime? I think if you're going to check out the anime, check out the original anime and then check out Brotherhood. Because you can watch one, you can watch the first one and then watch Brotherhood second, but you cannot do the opposite. At least not and enjoy it. Because there's things that Brotherhood does significantly better. However, I'd say there's arcs in that original anime that are better. In, like, I think the um, Tucker arc in the first anime was better than the one in the second one. Just, just personal preference. Still a terrible ending to that little arc. But I'd say it really hits harder in the first one because they build that relationship a bit more. That being said, overall, I'd say the manga is the... Uh, the manga... The Brotherhood is, like, almost page per page, the manga. It's a very good adaptation. But I'd still say the manga stands on its own uh, as kind of perfect. The action of the alchemy is top freaking tier. The story of the return of one's body, the resurrection of a mother that failed so so good and i don't think full malachemist has an arc that doesn't hit or deliver an emotional punch that's necessary i have an arc i like a little bit less but we're talking about like dropping from an s to an a for a second i think overall this lands in the s tier okay guilty crown so this is the other uh one that i talked about earlier like future diaries that has a a bit of a bad rap because of the main protagonist being like a how could i say well, it's not because of the main character. Like, yeah, the, the female protagonist is one that's very liked as well. Uh, but the main character is a bit of a... God, I don't like the main character of Guilty Crown. Story-wise, uh, main character is able to pull out a sword out of this female protagonist. Uh, you've seen it. I'd say the art of the anime is really, really good. And the music was on point. It's definitely a great way to, re to, to watch it. But I'd say it, uh, it falls off a little bit harder on the anime version than it does in the manga version. Uh, manga version is pretty consistent throughout, and I'd say it wastes a little bit less time. Not a super long series either way, but I'd say the manga is definitely worth checking out. Um, overall, though, the action is pretty good, but it's not a super complex action. You're not going to be trading sword blows for 20 minutes uh, like in some of these other series. Uh, on the flip side, story-wise, the story is pretty good. I'd say B-tier story, definitely not a D-tier -tier story, but I'm probably going to have to put Guilty Crown down in the D-tier because the the arcs are not super engaging. The ending is okay. And yeah, I, I don't think it's it's reinventing the wheel. All right, Detective Conan. Really, Bernard, you put Detective Conan in here? Yeah, so Detective Conan is still ongoing and is kind of a story. I, I've watched hundreds of episodes and I've read, I'm not up to date on Detective Conan, but I, I've read hundreds of chapters of it. Uh, 500 chapters some of that um it's it's a gr if you're into detective stuff i'll consider that the action it's top tier like it, detective stuff in um there's only one one other series on this list that i would put kind of in that area of uh detectiveness but i'd say that detective conan is like the classic uh what i'd say is like the connecting story is in in kind of frustrating because it there's a really good connective story 
but it's so spread out over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of chapters that it's just used as a tool to bring people to different locations more than it is to actually tell a story. And the fact that there's no ending in sight and it's not that kind of story just is kind of frustrating for me. Little arcs will happen and you'll get little end, little mini endings and often they'll pay off with a, uh, a story beat, which I think they do well. But I have to put Detective Conan in the B tier because at what it does, there is not much better than that. Like Detective Conan is top tier for that. But that story and some of some of the some of the investigations are really not great. Claymore. Okay. Claymore's action is S tier. Uh, Claymore's story, I'd say the story with Tess is is pretty pretty up there, pretty good. Uh, but story overall, it's kind of light. Uh, the mythology of the world is really interesting, though, I will say that. But if you look at the arcs, uh, I don't think there's a big issue in arcs in, in that one. Not too much. Uh, the only the only issue is like while the action is top tier, it, the characters are very cold in this series, so it's a little hard to get engaged much with uh, with these characters and like beyond like ooh they're so cool. That's kind of like the. Uh, would you read the the anime versus the manga? The manga is uh, a bit more complete. I'd say the manga is the definitive way to do it. I'd say action wise, it's it's up there, man. It's amazing action. I'm gonna put. I'm going to put Claymore in the B because it does action extremely well, but has a paper thin story that links it all together. Psychopaths. So this is not the psychopaths you're thinking of. This is kind of an offshoot of the anime. It follows one of the character, one of the detectives on a different thing. I, when Psychopaths season one came out, I loved it. It was so good. Definitely fell off hard in the other series. Uh, something, something else on this list suffers from as well. Um, this, this is nice. It's kind of a, again, it has that detective vibe with future tech. I love that futuristic world when manga does it, does it really well. It's a fun series. I don't think the action's exceptionally compelling. Story-wise, it's pretty solid. I think overall, I'll land it around a C. I don't think it's terrible. Uh, I think it's actually quite fine. I think it's still better than these, and I can argue that. A comic, a kill. Okay, so... Following those tropes of those characters with um, different power sets that are all up against a group. And what I really enjoy about Kamega Kill is just the, they're not up against a single person. They're up against basically like a government system, which is not something that common. You'll see it in One Piece, but you won't see it in that many other series. Actually, I say that the two next series are like that as well. Um, but it has a, a protagonist that's not the strongest character in the story. Uh, the I'd say the, man the, the manga will still stand more on its own for me, and I think manga is the definitive way to to read it. I'd say most people came encountered a Kamiya kill in the anime version that I think definitely was super solid and was, had deserved its its uh, its fans. But I'd say the manga is the way to read it. Um, I would say, uh, arc-wise, pretty good. They make you care about characters that you didn't think you'd care about, which is impressive. Uh, I would actually probably put it around the B tier. Uh, it's really close to the A tier for me, but I, I'll say I keep it in the B tier. Seraph of the End. All right, so Seraph of the End is a vampire manga uh, that follows, again, there's a famous anime about this, uh, the pretty boys, pretty boy vampire characters. Um, not as much as va like Vampire Diaries or, oh wait, that's the wrong series. I forget the name of that vampire series. Huh. Um, okay, so this one is actually very popular. The manga is significantly better than the anime. Uh, the It did not give me the same bad vibes as the anime did actually i'd say start with the end in manga version is is pretty good the action is really cool the uniquenesses of the abilities are pretty great uh again vampire society versus and it's society not just like rogue vampires vampire society versus human society but even in the humans there's questionable ways of doing things i think it adds some interesting complexity i actually think seraph of the end is a really good one the story overall the the motivations of the protagonist for me are are okay, but I don't think they're at, they're great. That's unfortunately the reality. I'm gonna put them in the B tier because I think it has enough to offer to be there. All right, guys, One Piece. It's time. It's time to time to get some haters or some fans. 
Okay, so One Piece, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of One Piece. I've, I've gotten back into it recently because of uh, like some recent stuff that happened in the anime, actually, for with the Kaido fight. But I, it's never been my thing, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Uh, I don't like ensemble stories with too many characters because I like to follow one or two characters, and that's about it. And in this one, there's a lot of characters I really don't care about. That being said, I have to recognize something. One Piece has built an amazing mythology, an amazing connective storyline about a character that wants to be Pirate King and has brought on these quirky, interesting characters along the way that will lay down their lives for him because of who he represents. He's a simple-minded, dumb protagonist. In a lot of ways, Naruto and him are very similar. Actually, Bleach too. Like they, they all went for the dumb protagonists. They're extremely strong. But it's that belief in protecting your friends, that belief in backing people up that make it these series really compelling. One Piece's action definitely gets better as time goes on. Uh, this is a very long manga. It's nowhere near done. And I'd still say the manga is the definitive way to watch it. Though with the recent anime stuff, like I feel like you need to watch some fights in the anime version <laughs> because they're just better. Uh... But the manga is top freaking tier. Uh, there's these very emotional beats in the story that really hit hard. The character design is maybe the biggest thing that I'm like, is either you like it or you don't kind of thing. But I think in action, it is S tier. I think in overall story and getting to the places, it's S tier. And I think that in the arcs is the place where it suffers the most because there are definitely arcs that are not as enjoyable as others. But in such a long series, that's bound to happen. So, I will put One Piece in the S tier. I'm saying it, that I prefer Naruto personally. But I think One Piece is the better series overall. Alright, Tomodachi Game. Story-wise, fantastic. Tomodachi Game follows this... Uh, this situation the characters are put in regarding uh, somewhat gambling and different things of the sort, uh, not to be confused with uh, Igura not Igarashi, I'm forgetting. There's another manga and anime that are like really much about gambling. This is a little different because it's about putting people's psychology against each other. I guess the other one is too. Uh, Tomodachi Game has a really solid um, action type of like creating these tense moments between characters that are really interesting. A main protagonist that's really good to follow around. I'm going to put Tomo Tomodachi Game in the A tier, actually. Uh, I think this one is underappreciated for how great it is. Uh, you can argue if it actually should be seinen instead of shonen. Its themes are definitely uh, more on that side. However, I'd argue that it should still be considered a shonen series. Um, the Grey Map. Okay, so D. Gray Man is a guilty pleasure of mine, one that I really enjoyed uh, because of its very unique kind of setup. The story is... Mm, story is weird, man. The story the story works, but I'd say, like, it, it's it's not it's not fantastic. Uh, it has some arcs that are not great. It has some really good action, though, I will say that. Not S tier, but I'd say A tier. I'm going to put D. Gray Man in the C tier, which is kind of tragic because I really enjoyed D. Gray Man quite a bit. Slam Dunk. All right. Yes, I do have sports manga on this because they are still shonen manga. They're, these are basically tournament arcs in most cases. Slam Dunk has aged, when you watch the anime, woo, has this one aged. Oh, and for D. Gray Man, I'd say stick to the manga. Don't don't really go for the anime. Unless you started with the anime, but I'd say go for the manga because there's more content. Um, uh, I think there's more content. Uh, Slam Dunk, I'd say go for the manga 100%. The anime has aged way too much, and the manga still looks crisp and looks great. Uh, it's super solid. Uh, Action-wise, fantastic. This is Kuroko's, like, ancestor and the way it went, but it was, like, it's more realistic than Kuroko is. Great story about teammates coming together. Storyline, it's about the story of making it to the end of the tournaments and, like, becoming the best basketball player you can be and achieving your career goals. I'm going to put Slam Dunk in the A tier. This is a huge contender for the S tier in the sports world. Like, there, when it comes to sports manga, I don't think there's much else you could put this high up in 
But Slam Dunk, I'm putting in the A tier, but I could consider it for the S tier. Like, I'll keep it in mind. Fire Force. Fire Force, uh, popular anime that came out. Weird thing about basically firemen, but all the powers are fire-based. Uh, I think the action is fantastic in this series. I find the story is convenient. <laughs> There's, I don't know, I'm not crazy about the story. I, I, I don't think it's great. I, I really don't. I think it's probably one of the weakest shonen stories I've seen. Though I do find the protagonist's specific story kind of pretty good. Uh, and he he grows a lot as a character, which I gotta respect. Oh, maybe I'm being too hard on him. Um, from an arc perspective, there's some arcs I really don't care for in Fire Force, but again, the manga is tighter than the anime is. Um, I'll put Fire Force in the in the B tier. I think it's better than yeah, I think it's better than these nonetheless. Hitman Reborn. Okay, Hitman Reborn is the story of the Arco Baleno and the. Truman 13. Truman? Uh, no, I'm confusing two things. Anyway, uh, so it follows a protagonist that is basically the heir to a mafia family, basically. And he has this assassin called Reborn that is there to get him. And basically this gun, when he shoots it at the main character's head, will draw out his um, confidence side and his latent side with his powers, and he'll become that character. Uh, the character does grow throughout, but it takes freaking forever for the protagonist to stop being a whiny little character. Oh my god, he's frustrating. Which sucks, because the action is really good. What these um, Vongola, are, which is the name of like the family, can do power-wise is really cool, but... The whole Hitman thing, like Reborn himself, the, the baby version, which is basically a baby version of an adult assassin. They got transformed into babies anyway. It's a weird story. Uh, I'm going to put it down the D tier. Uh, I really, really like this when it came out. But, man, ha pacing-wise, I, I get... If you annoy me as a character, it's, it's frustrating. Full Metal Panic. Full Metal Panic was in my top anime slash top manga for a good long time. I loved Full Metal Panic. It was so, so good. But man, the the, mong the anime hits a little different because I feel like you engage with the characters a little bit better, but I think the manga is tighter. Um, the comedy, Fumofu, check out the anime because I think comedy in anime just works a little bit better than manga does, but that's just a me thing. Uh, Story-wise, overall, it's a mecha series. It's actually one of the only mecha series I think I put on this list. There's a bunch of other ones. Maybe I'll make another list for mecha one of these days. But Fullmetal Panic follows a uh, Sergeant Sagara Suzuki and his... Um, he's a young child soldier. Think Mercenary Rollman or a bunch of other things. And he's sent to protect this girl that has this uh, power, air quote, to... Uh, I can't even quite define her power. I guess it's like the vision of the future in a way. Or, uh, and But he's he was raised in the military and a lot of the comedy comes from his misunderstanding of social cues. And it's great. It's fantastic. It's fun. It's enjoyable. Action-wise, I think action-wise it's probably an A-tier. Story-wise, um, obviously there's a lot of slice of life stuff intermingled in here. Uh, and that's where the comedy comes from. So it's not meant to be as tight. I'd say story it probably is in the B-tier as well. Arc-wise... There's no arcs that I dislike, but I definitely think there's some stuff that accelerate the pace of the story, some things that slow it down a lot. I I think it's overall a, a, a great B tier series, uh, but I think it's forgotten a lot. Rise of the Yokai Clan, a fun protagonist. Uh, fun protagonist. I think he's a good protagonist. Uh, I think story wise, probably around the C tier. Action wise, I think I think you can put Yokai in like the B tier for action. And arc-wise, it's not a significantly long series, so I I put it overall in the C tier. Assassin Classroom, oh Jesus! I I didn't think I'd like this one as much as I did. Holy, was this good! Uh, in the same way as GTO is a great story about raising up kids that were troublesome and troublemakers into amazing members of society. Classroom Assassin Classroom is the same thing, but they use a weird alien creature to do it, and it's fantastic 
The action is great. The assassination attempts are so over the top, but it's a great way of teaching things. Um, it's definitely one that I think is built in a way that's really good at teaching values to young and older people at the same time. I think overall, I think Assassin's Classroom is an A tier, A tier manga. Uh, do you watch the anime or read the manga? I think you can go either way on this one because I think the anime is really good. Okay, Magi. Magi is uh, a great magic story. Like, uh, if you're looking at, there's not a lot of manga set in like an Arabian setting of like deserts and things like that with this type of look to it so it's definitely i think probably the best of that genre uh maggie's this innocent kind magician that is trying to find um his hero if you will to kind of make peace with the world and bring magic into a place of perfect tranquility but the characters are really good and i will say that simbad is such a good character uh and his arc where they follow Simbad specifically is fantastic. If you're watching the anime, the best anime thing is the Simbad story. It's so good. Um, Maggie's action is kind of unique because of these djinn equips uh, transforming into these djinns that give them super strong things. But most of the fights are very much about super, like an ability being done. So I don't think the action I would put at the top is tier. Uh, Story-wise, I think if you consider Sinbad as one of the main stories, it's pretty good. The endings part of the story was a little weak for me. The ma uh, the manga goes further than the anime, so definitely want why I read the manga. I'm gonna put it in the ooh. I'm gonna put it in the B tier because that story, like flowing weirdly, is kind of strange. Uh, the arcs, though, I'd say are all pretty started solid. Ranmat one half. Uh, main character that transforms into a girl under certain circumstances uh fighting martial arts story mainly a comedy like the that's the most important thing there's an anime of this and a manga of this i'd say stick with the manga because it has aged well it has aged and it clearly has its aged art style like the most aged you can see kind of in the picture here but is because the characters don't have a lot of definition there's not much detail to the art but i still think the manga has aged far better than the anime uh, though the an the anime is definitely beloved and loved by many, uh, I would still say it falls into the C tier because of like overarching story, comedy of the week. Under these pretenses, if I was just looking comedy purely, it would be much higher. But since it's about the story, about arcs that are not too interesting, eh. Attack on Titan. Oh Jesus Christ! <sighs> okay, Attack on Titan, the manga. Let's think about this first. Should you watch the anime or read the manga? Right now, I'd say read the manga because the anime is never going to end. It's infuriating. But I will say the anime is a masterpiece. There's no doubt. Attack on Titan is a masterpiece. Its story shifts significantly uh, along the way into something that becomes far more political than it was initially. It's far more about uncovering a secret initially and the survival of humans and becomes far more about um, politics towards the end of the story and I think that it would be fair for some people to be turned off by that I think it respects its audience quite a bit by making the story more complex as time goes on and I think that's something to be respected quite a bit my god my S tier is going to look like uh, a typical fanboy I'm gonna put the Attack on Titan manga. The ending of oh, the ending of Nakers. I'm gonna put it in the top tier. Screw it. The action for what it is is like the gear makes the action so good. The storyline overall, while it's weird as shit, they make it work. They make it work, and they it is a complex story. It would be really easy for it not to work. It is what it is. Evangelion. Um, I'd say the definite the the definite version you want to okay so I'm gonna put the manga for Evangelion uh, lower than I would put the anime uh, the anime of Evangelion particularly the re-released anime of Evangelion uh, the most recent one that finished like last year I think would be probably S tier um, as an anime however the manga since it was made before that and before the story had a clear final destination I'm gonna put Eva's 
manga there. It's good. It's it's good, but it's it's not good enough. That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Another one that's a really popular. Uh, I think has a great action is really good. I'd say story is not. Story is whatever they're feeling like they're going in from a direction perspective. Uh, the motives of the character remain largely the same. He wants to protect the people around him and, and grow his his empire as a way to protect the people around him. I'd say from a story perspective, it's probably B tier. Uh, from an action perspective, it's probably an A tier. From an arc perspective, oh, it has some frustrating arcs. Wow, I'm going to put this in, this in the B tier. I'm surprised. Okay. I'm going to put uh, Slime in B tier. Wow. Under this criteria, I have to, because to, to be honest, while I do really like the manga, I can't deny that like from a story perspective, it's it's hit or miss. And, and the while I do appreciate that the characters love the protagonist so much, it gets a little grating sometimes. All right, Trigun. So there's an anime airing right now, Trigun, that I haven't checked out yet. I'm a fan of the original anime from years ago. I think it's aged. I'd understand why people don't want to go that way. Um, Trigun has one of the best story twists uh, I think you'll see in in anime or manga. I think it's phenomenal. Uh, I'd say the definitive way to watch it is still the anime. I think it's still better. Um, I think Western audiences like Trigun more. I, I from to my remember from the research I did a little while back. Like Trigun is a lot more popular in North America than it was in. Uh, in the east uh just because like there's some western type feels to it and it aired here in english and was quite popular when it aired i'm gonna put it down in the oh, i'm gonna put the manga in the c tier i think that's just the way i have to go dragon ball so i'm putting dragon ball dragon ball z and dragon ball super technically it's just dragon ball and dragon ball super in the manga form here so one, should you watch the anime or read the manga? For the fights, you're going to go watch the anime. Because those fights are Cell, amazing. Uh, Jiren, amazing. Frieza, terrible. Uh, <laughs> Frieza lasts like a year. Uh, but because of the pacing, the manga is significantly better. Fights, S tier. Fights were, like, this is where fights were created. It's really good at doing it. So yes, fights are S tier. When it comes to story, D tier. Stories are terrible. You'll tell me, but the stories exist in the fights. Most of the time they don't. Strong character shows up, main character has to defeat him, needs to power up, trains or dies or something like that, and eventually defeats the character. There is fight storytelling taking place about overcoming challenges and stuff like that, but don't tell me that the overarching story is good. That being said, the fights are S tier, the story is D tier, and the arcs, there are some terrible arcs. I'm going to put Dragon Ball in the C tier. It's so weird to have a, sort, a series that has an S in it, but the rest of it just doesn't hold up. If you're still watching at this point, please take a chance to like and subscribe to the channel. It would be really appreciated if you like this type of content. Also, if you want to see more manga content on the channel, please leave a comment down below. I do mostly manga stuff, but I do want to do more manga stuff going forward as well because I've read so many manga over the years that I want to share with you guys. All right, JoJo. Oh, God. I I I'm basically playing with fire because these series are all like beloved by so many people and their their fan base are like rabid that being said jojo jojo is a style and you 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 like it for the memes in a lot of cases but some a lot of people just love jojo and yes i'm putting all of jojo's different stories into this and no they are not all created equal I, i'm putting that as the weak arcs perspective but i don't think it's entirely fair that i'm doing that to jojo are, is the action good? The action is solid. I'd say the manga has... I think the manga is still the definitive way to, to check out JoJo. But I'd understand why you're a fan, if why people would go for the anime simply because of the voiceover does a lot for JoJo. And in the more recent series, or the more good-looking series, the coloring does a lot for it as well. That being said, 
Uh, inconsistent throughout. Action, I'd say top A tier. It's really good. Uh, Story-wise, individually in the different arcs, the stories are pretty solid. Um, you're not talking about super deep storytelling. Most of the joy of JoJo comes from other things. It comes from the style, the uh, the comedy, the humor, the style of humor. So from the metrics that I'm using here today, I'm going to put JoJo in the B tier. I don't think it holds up to anything in the A tier, to be perfectly honest. Moriarty the Patriot. Uh, so Moriarty is uh, interesting because I didn't know of it until I watched the anime. Then I went back to the manga and read the manga. Uh, I really like Moriarty's, uh, if you don't know who Moriarty is, he's the arch nemesis of um, not Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, my god, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, Moriarty and having a character built around him as an anti-hero, uh, setting up these different scenarios, inve kind of investigating things, but doing almost reverse investigation because he's leading an investigator kind of along. I like Moriarty far more than most people do. I, th I like it a lot more than Conan because I actually think the story the story is really, really solid. I think the, the, the arc that brings the protagonist from the start of the story to his end goal at the end is phenomenal. The action is well set up. I'd say probably A tier in regards to, it's not fighting action, but it's like the event he created. And then you have the arcs. I think it's pretty consistent. I'm going to have to put Moriarty in the B tier. I'm actually surprised. I thought I would end up putting it lower. Okay, Gintama. Okay, Gintama I need to look at in a different kind of way. Because unlike most series that are episodic, uh, Gintama has completely serious arcs. And it has other arcs that are completely comedy arcs. Fundamentally, it's a comedy, first and foremost. But I'd say Gintama in its realm is the best version you could ever have. It is not for everyone, though. Um, its stories are... It's stories that have emotional beats are like will rip your heart out. Like they're really well done. The storytelling is fantastic. The comedy doesn't work for me most of the time. Uh, but that being said, action is S tier. Amazing fights in this series when they happen. Uh, story wise, it's not an overarching story. I can't give it a good grade for that because I, I was tough on other series for the same thing. So I'm gonna put it maybe in the C tier. But individual stories. And since it's an arc-based series, I'd say that's actually one of its strong suits because you get specifically what you're getting during that period. I'm going to put Gintama in the B tier, unfortunately. All right. Ayashiman, unfortunately... Ayashiman was a manga that I was really enjoying about a character that uh, feels no pain, is extremely strong, gets involved with the world of yokai. But unfortunately, it got cancelled before it could ever really conclude or anything like that. So unfortunately, I've got to put it down the D tier because there'll never be a story about it. Witch Hunter. I really liked Witch Hunter for a long time, but this release schedule for chapters was painful. Uh, the witches in this world, the whole dynamics and storytelling that was taking place there, super solid. Uh, I like the main character's uh, fighting style and way of going, so action was really solid. Because of its release and because of some arcs that really didn't hit very much, some comedy didn't quite work for me, I'm going to put it down in the C tier. Okay, My Hero Academia. Um, so My Hero Academia suffers from something uh, which I think is... I don't think is very fair that I'm, that I'm going to send its way. Uh, but I think My Hero Academia is uh, kind of a tale of two stories for two different audiences. And a portion of the audience will really jive with everything. And definitely there's plenty of people that do. Uh, but I'll say that the first part of the story is very young. It's very friendship i need to overcome you're talking about like the early days of naruto like like the beginning beginning of naruto of like uh believe it kind of times uh and overcoming the basic challenges around you interesting power sets the world building was was like definitely interesting and the powers were so very different from everyone else but things around it the goals of the main characters were very young but as it gets later in the story and it's about protecting others without harming them. And like the, the ideas become a bit more complex. It gets a bit darker and a bit more respectful of a more mature audience. And I think it gets like a better, it becomes a better series. Uh, the manga is phenomenal. The art is super nice. The action is 
S tier action. Um, but the storyline is, I find the villains, well, I, okay, I found some of the villains very forgettable and very uninteresting in regards to them. Others are super compelling. But yeah, though it doesn't quite hit consistently strong, so I'm going to put my hero in the B tier. Inuyasha. All right, Inuyasha is like my childhood right there. I watch Inuyasha on TV. The music is fantastic. The pacing is terrible. The pacing's terrible. Uh, the story eventually got concluded, which was great. Uh, the manga suffers from it has aged quite a bit. So has the anime. I would say the anime is the definitive way to watch this. Uh, in my hero, I'd say the anime, it's okay if you watch it. But I'd say the manga is still better, in my opinion, even though the coloring is so freaking good. Uh, Inuyasha, I would still say, go watch the anime, even though they waste so much time. And the whole Shigan Charge thing gets so frustrating, but I'd still say, it's a good ride. But I have to put it in the D tier, because I don't think it excels in anything. It's funny, because a few years ago I would have said, this is an A or B tier, but like, what am I comparing it against now? Like, forget it. Jujutsu Kaisen. Um, the world building's phenomenal. I don't think their story is is particularly deep as of yet, at least from, uh, like, what I've, like, I don't know. It's not as of yet. Like, uh, the story is not hyper deep uh, in regards to it, but the lore is really interesting. Uh, the characters and their abilities are great. I actually find that the trio in this one is one of the best trios out there in manga. Uh, it, it, it does, they have a personality that no one is useless in the like the the female protagonist of that in the trio is not like Sakura in Naruto. Like she's definitely not a damsel in distress at all and like she's just a strong female character that's in control of her situation. Uh the powers are cool, the Sukuna thing is really cool. I love the action of the series. Um but the story is kind of average. So I'm going to put Jujutsu I'm going to put Jujutsu probably in the I put Naruto in the A tier. Huh? I'm gonna put Jujutsu in the B tier, and the yeah, in the B tier nonetheless. Okay, Parasite. Uh, Parasite has amazing action, good storytelling. Uh, again, that's one I think I can consider a seinen. Technically, it's much uh, more mature themes about uh, identity and things of the sort. I think from a storytelling perspective, it's more concise. It's about coming to grips with who you become to a certain extent. I think Parasite. I'm going to put Parasite in the A tier. If you haven't read Parasite, I'd say go do it. Because I think the, the anime is a great action story. But I feel like Parasite, the manga, came out a little bit more uh, in the depth of the analysis on oneself. At least that's the way I felt about it. Cage of Eden. Okay, so Cage of Eden is a... If you've watched the TV show Lost, this is basically Cage of Eden. Characters get are on a school trip. They get end up on this island, this weird island where there's dinosaurs and time dilation issues and things like that. Cage of Eden was one of these series that had me turning the page, like looking to read more because the mysteries were so compelling. But when you got to the end, you realize that similarly to Lost, things don't make entirely sense. They don't kind of all fit together too well. They don't make... It just doesn't work. Uh, so the story doesn't quite work. The action of the scenario is pretty good. I'd say the action's A, B tier. But I have to put Cage of Eden, unfortunately, in the D tier. Because when you realize that everything you just went through doesn't quite work, it's rough. All right, Bleach, the last of the big three. So Bleach, for a long time, was my favorite one. And I think to this day, it still stands... Uh, between Naruto and Bleach, they're like always competing in my head, but... Bleach was a bit more concise and a bit more, at least it felt more concise when I read it. I don't even remember the chapter counts of these series, but it has one of the best arcs in shonen manga, in my opinion. The Aizen arc, uh, the Aizen twist was spectacular, um, and the whole quest to save Rukia was fantastic. Um, a character overcoming his weaknesses. Uh, we're talking about still dumb protagonists here, but I think it's a fantastic series that unfortunately has a final arc that should never have been written. It should have finished after the Aizen arc. Aizen was a fantastic villain. 
which fine they they used it to introduce the um the god of the world and to go back into the quincy's but the quincy's were never an interesting part of the story to me uh, and it didn't quite work so from an arc perspective i'm gonna dip it quite a bit from an action perspective it's an s tier manga 100 percent. from a storyline perspective the quest of the main character to first protect his family then protect the small group of people around him then protect soul society is a good quest i don't think it's particularly as deep as Naruto's quest to be Hokage or the One Piece quest to be King of Pirates. The motivations that flow Ichigo are much more personal. They're closer to My Hero Academia to a certain extent. It's protect the people around you. Um, but, oh God. Because of that final arc, I'm gonna put Bleach in B tier. It's not a short arc. It's a significant amount of time. And it's just from a from a according to the like the scenarios that I set up for this this ranking I can't deny that that arc is huge and it's the final arc of the series well we're going to be getting more but it was the final arc of the series for a long time okay school rumble like it's not a story series it's a comedy series uh the action or the comedy events are huge uh, I think it's great it's hilarious it created a whole freaking genre in, in the period when it came out in anime form uh the manga is hilarious it's really good um, story is almost non-existent action for its genre i would say s tier action uh arcs well there's some stuff that's less interesting in there i'm gonna put school rumble down in the c tier uh it's really good at what it does doesn't do much more all right black clover i shit so hard on this manga and anime when i started reading them and watching them the reality was Black Clover felt so generically Naruto when it started of I'm going to be the Wizard King. I'm going to overcome this. Oh, I have this dark, silent rival that I'm up against that's kind of my enemy but kind of my ally. Like, it was just like, oh, no. But it really became its own thing to a certain extent by creating an interesting world of wizards, magic, the whole idea that the main character has no aptitude for magic and he has a sword that can defeat magic specifically, I really don't like his power set. That being said, it's not terrible. There's some really good action there. I'll say stick with the manga. The, the unfortunate reality is like the art of the anime is so inconsistent that it's kind of the only way to go when you're when you're watching, you're you're checking it out. Um, action, I put action up in the A tier. Uh, I put storyline... I put storyline probably in the C tier. I really don't find the storytelling that compelling. But I will say it's arcs. have he, It has a good... I would put A tier in the arcs because I think it has some really good arcs, actually. Overall, that puts our Black Clover either in the C or the B tier. Mm, but I'm going to put Black Clover in C just because bleach isn't beat i'm gonna knock it down a little bit but i'd say based on the story it's kind of around there fairly i probably should put it in b tier but i think it's in c tier high school of the dead you're gonna go in the d tier <sighs> high school of the dead zombie series really really etchy um one of the uh famous stories of uh physics on the female body uh yeah anyway it is what it is there's a worse series out there, but it's a little lacking. Prince of Tennis. I love Prince of Tennis. I love the character. I love everything going on with him. Story-wise, it's kind of paper thin. It's uh, very tournament arky in its way of being continuously tournament arky. Again, it's a, it's a sports manga, but the, our, our main character, Ichizen, doesn't really go through many changes throughout the series. He's kind of OP all the way through. He learns some stuff. He gets defeated. But he's he's not deep in any way. Actually, as much as I love Prince of Tennis, I think its action is good. I'm gonna drop it in the C tier. Ice Shield Twenty One is, in my opinion, the best sports manga out there. It has great characters. It has a good story of getting where you start to where you go but also who you have to become on the way there 
Uh, it's not all about winning all the time. He definitely loses a fair bit. And the arcs are on point. It's an S-tier manga for me. Good on you, sports manga, for making it up there. All right, Diamond No Ace, or Ace in the Hole. Um, I'm more of a fan of Major, personally. I will say that this one goes way more in-depth in the sports. The main character stands out a bit less in this series because it's more about the team. Um, I think the, the, the tense moments in the series are pretty good. I'd say probably B or A tier. I'd say the overlining stories, actually probably around the B or A tier as well. I think there's arcs that are pretty freaking not great. Uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it down in the B tier. Uh, while its arcs aren't great, I still think that from a sports telling perspective, it's one of the best uh, baseball series out there. The Promised Neverland. Watch the first season of the anime, then continue with the manga. That's my my watching advice for Ace in the Hole. I would say. You could just stick with the manga. Though normally I like sports anime in anime form, I will say the manga is a bit better for that one. Uh, the Promised Neverland is uh, just a great story overall. I don't like where it ends. I think it, it's... St even even in the manga version, I think the story is a lot better at the beginning than it is later on. But at, at the same time, I think it's, its action and tense moments are A tier, absolutely. The inconsistency of its arcs, but a really strong story. I think I'll drop it down in the B tier. I think it's a, it's a good story overall. Uh, one outs is I really like the idea of this character that's actually not a great baseball player, but he's just an amazing gambler. <laughs> and he creates his scenarios based on that. And the only thing is like the, the tying story is not that strong. The action air quote i'd say is really good which i would call that the gambling not the actual baseball because there's like these really tense moments but there's nothing surprising about it because it kind of always goes the main character's way because he's just too smart for his own good i'm gonna drop it down in the d tier no choice nejima is a classic uh the anime is good and the manga is good i'd say because of the aged art style go go for the manga instead um harem heavy very young harem too eh, not, not a big fan uh but magic school good concepts some interesting fights honestly i'm gonna put nijima down in the d tier to be honest with you dead man wonderland such a cool premise the idea of this prison that'll put people with powers up against each other loved it loved it loved it loved it storyline about the getting out of prison basically is okay i'd say it's probably a b or c tier action there's some really good action in the series um i really like the anime even though there's some great weaknesses to it uh and the arcs it's not an arc heavy story um but i but if you consider each phase of getting out as an arc it's pretty consistent I'd probably put it in the B or C tier. Uh, I'll put it in the C tier because I'm not completely sold on the relationship and I'm not completely sold on the uh, ending either. Okay, Zatch Bell. Why would I put Zatch Bell? Zatch Bell is basically like a kid's show pretty much, but it was actually, it, it's not that, oh God, you're getting, people are gonna hate this, but it's not that different from looking at My Hero Academia's first season. It's very young focused. It's uh, it's about friendship and finding a way. The only thing is the main character, well, Zatch, not the main character actually, is too dumb. Like he's just, he's a Pokemon basically. And it, it's kind of annoying. But there's an interesting story in the background of this thing. I don't even think Zatch Bell's a skip. I think it's something worth checking out. I don't think it's good enough to be up there. But I think if you're bored and you've read everything, it's a fine thing to go go read. But I'd say if you're up for the level of Pokemon in like character complexity, it'll be like a little bit above that, but not much. Air Gear, my favorite manga of all time, kind of. I love the first season. I love the season of the anime that exists. I wish they would continue it. Uh, the OVAs are amazing. The concept of these roller blades that could fly in the sky just worked with me. I don't know why. There's an etchy, there's etchy aspects of the story. The main character is a bit of a... He's a cocky, skilled character that's also kind of dumb, but also really a bit of an asshole. But it really works for the series. 
But does this story get weird, man? It did not need to, but it became... I feel like every story needs to go into, but now we need to save the world. But this was not that kind of series when it started off. Anime or manga? I'd say manga, unfortunately. Uh, the anime has some cool music and some good vibes, but I'd still say the animation's not amazing, and it's probably too aged for most people. Uh, I think it's worth checking out. I can't give it more than the C tier, though, unfortunately. I'd love to give it more, but... It's probably a D tier, but I'm giving it C tier because it's my list. Mob Psycho 100. I'll say uh, manga for story, but the anime is where you should watch it. The color of Mob Psycho 100 is so amazing. And the art works so well for the series. It is the definitive way to look at it. Uh, wow, what a, what an amazing... One Punch Man's the same. Like, One Punch Man's anime is... God, the art's amazing. Um, okay, One Punch Man's story... One Punch Man's story is not bad if you really... It's not, a, like, it's not, like, complex, but it's got this interesting, like, underlying layer of a main character kind of coming into his own and becoming a bit more. Uh, but that being said... I think Mod Psycho story is okay. Some of the arcs, some of the arcs were just some of the comedy doesn't work for me. So some of the arcs were really not great. Uh, I'm gonna put Mob Psycho in the B tier, but it's definitely fun. Okay, Fairy Tale. I feel like I feel like Fairy Tale has its uh, its fans as like the fourth or fifth uh, stories. Well, once you get through the big three, Fairy Tale is probably shortly after that on your list because of. Uh, with the amount of chapters, kind of what it's, what the setting is, and things like that. Um, fairy tale, the the complex of the guild, that that whole idea that really is game like in nature, it worked for me in a lot of ways. Um, I don't like Natsu particularly. I don't think he's a great protagonist. He's another character that's like a hothead that's not that smart, that just does things impulsively. Uh, but there's a lot of really cool power sets in this series. The overarching story is not very relevant um there's there's arcs to the story to the series that have like interesting stories but i don't think it's particularly compelling i'd say honestly fairy tale fairy tale probably lands lower than black clover for me black clover does a better time with storytelling than it does I, i'd say art style wise it's really nice but i'm gonna put it in the c tier if you're a fan of fairy tale and you think i'm insane i'd love to see uh, why you like it so much Hikaru no Go is a shonen series about Go, the board game Go. And it's amazing. I love the anime when it came out. I'd say the manga is definitely the way to read it. Um, the lack of finality to the series, though, kind of really hits it. Um, the story of a character rising up in the ranks, learning to be independent uh, and not be defined by the ghost, because there's a ghost of a famous Go player uh, in history that is there. I'd say, for most people, this is going to be a D tier, but I'd say give it a shot. Chrono Crusade. Okay, Chrono Crusade is an anime that I loved as a kid. I thought it was really good. I thought it, it had some interesting commentaries on religion um, and demons and things of the sort. The action's pretty good. It's aged quite a bit. The manga's pretty nice, though. I'd say it's probably going to land in the D tier for most people. Spy Family. Spy Family's not finished, to be fair. Um, but nonetheless, it's on this list. Spy Family has, I'd say, a really good story base underneath it. Interesting characters. The events are fun. I don't think the events are particularly amazing. Uh, and from a arc perspective, oh, there's some arcs that are just not great. And I, I really like Spy Family, but on the criteria that I chose to evaluate stuff on, I, I can't really put it anywhere other than like C tier the comedy works it's a lot of fun it's like uh, cutesy fun I don't know yeah, I don't know I can't put it higher Tagami Bachi or letter B the idea of the mailman of the future where people are fighting against these giant monsters to try and deliver the mail to people and the hope that they bring with the mail is a very interesting concept. The story underpinning it is, I think, really good. Uh, the action is quite solid. I don't like that the main character is this really young 
dude. Uh, I wish he was a bit older, but it still works for me. I'd say it's probably around the C tier. All right, Helsing. So Helsing, the manga, is very close to Helsing Ultimate, uh, that version of the anime. Uh, I'd say check out the anime. Like Literally, the ending is exactly, exactly the same. Uh, but if you're a manga reader, I'd say you're not giving yourself a disservice by reading in manga form. Uh, Action-wise, it is grotesque, brutal, and beautiful. I think story-wise, uh, story is not... It's more event based than it is story based. So, so like there's there's not much story going on to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, there's some mythology that's going on, but not a lot of story. Interestingly enough, oh, that kind of dodges at quite a bit of points. The arcs are all pretty good for me. I, I put Helsing around the B tier. Hajime no Ippo. Oh my God, does this guy get an upgrade later on? So Hajime no Ippo, uh, both the anime and manga version start off looking a little like basic in art style. The anime also. And then turns into like one of the most beautiful things you're going to read or watch. Phenomenal, phenomenal series. Um, there's something that happens later on in the manga. Like the manga goes a lot further. So I think it's a definitive way to read it. The, th the, thing that I both <clears throat> the thing I both respect about Hajime no Ippo at the same time as being the thing that frustrates me is that it doesn't go where you think it's going to go. It doesn't become... If, I won't I won't spoil it but like it doesn't quite there's things you expect in this kind of series and it doesn't go there uh, which I respected it and when it happened I was like oh that's that's kind of disappointing uh, action wise it is sports genius uh, the whole storyline is very good probably on the A tier I'm gonna put Hajime no Ippo in the A tier in general Tenju Tenge is in my opinion, one of the best martial arts manga ever created from a pure martial arts perspective. Uh, the, the fights are insanity. Like, the, they're really well drawn. The anime is, is a read the manga anime, so read the manga. It's just simpler. Uh, it's an etchy series, but there's some amazing fights. Things get wild. Things get a little bit nutty. Uh, I'd say it has some weaker arcs, but I'd say fighting-wise, it is good. I think it's far better than people give it rights to gonna put it in the c tier it doesn't deserve to be in the d tier hunter hunter um in my opinion from a shonen perspective if you're looking at the classic shonens one of the best ever created uh the arcs i thought i would really hate the in like the uh, not the insect arc uh the ant arc but it was phenomenal I'm going to put Hunter x Hunter in the S tier. Uh, the fights are fantastic. The story is way better than it deserves to be. Uh, and there's things that happen in the story that add an extra layer of story to it. The arcs are really good. The different characters you're introduced to are really good too. Uh, it's one of the rare like ensembles that I like, uh, though you do primarily follow two uh, or three. It's really good. Trinity Seven, uh, Trinity Blood, sorry, Trinity Blood. Uh, Trinity Blood is a vampire series that has interesting mythology around the church in it, about a vampire that can kill other vampires uh, with a scythe. Really cool, like the art is beautiful in this. I, re I really, really like this manga. It's a lot of fun. Um, the action is pretty good. I'd say B tier action. Story-wise, there's a good story of cursed lives uh, inside of this that I enjoy quite a bit, but I wouldn't put it past the B or C tier nonetheless. Um, and the arcs, it's not much of an arc series because it's not that long. I'm going to put it in the C tier. The ending's a little weak, but I think it's uh, it's still a good manga. Okay, Baki. Baki, uh, in, in, in much the same way as Dragon Ball, like Baki's story is about the next fight, but there's a different vibe to that feel in Baki. The chase of the fight is just a different game entirely. Uh, there's more to it in, in that as he tries to make it to be as strong as his father, this this abusive man that is, God, his father is terrible. But the the action is S tier. The arcs, there, there's some fighting arcs that I didn't care about. There's also some characters we see fight that I don't care for, which so I'll, I'll ding it a little bit for that. I'm going to put Baki in the B tier. I think, I think when it comes to fighting manga, it's pretty, pretty darn solid. Um, Tsubasa Chronicles, to me, has one of the greatest love stories uh, in shonen manga. 
uh, which is rare because it's the foundation of it. Um, it it's a exploration of the whole clamp world, which is uh, really unique, which is something that you don't see a lot. Um, the action to me was really good and very different. Every world has different types of action. For me, Tsubasa Chronicles is going to be an A tier. Yeah. Okay, Record of Ragnarok has S tier fights, but everything else is D tier. Because there's, there's some characters that fight that are not that interesting. There's zero story. While there is some storytelling in the fight, it's there there's no there's no real story in this like to have a tournament arc start from basically chapter one is insane the the stories are all told in these micro stories about the characters and their past and their motivations but since their lives or their story ends as soon as the fight ends it's like whatever i'm good because of the strong d flavor in that i'm gonna put a record right rock in d tier doesn't mean you can't like it but for me it doesn't work Mashal. Mashal also is very story light. Uh, I think the action is top tier, and I think the arcs are all pretty top tier. I'm going to be putting it in the B tier. Oh, Tokyo Revengers. Story is really high up there, uh, though I will say that because there's a lot of convenience in the story, and I'd say the ending, they introduce something in near the ending that there's no justification for in the story. And obviously, time travel is not really justified in general in the story. But there's rules that are created, and all of a sudden the rules are not broken. But there's an extra rule that's added, and I think it's just because they wanted to end the story. And I have to ding them quite a bit for that. So I'm going to put them in probably... I still think it's an amazing ride that lasts a bit too long. I'm going to put you down in the C tier. Get Backers. Get Backers is an old school manga, which I think the manga still holds up quite a bit. The anime is a lot of fun, but I'd say that you're probably not going to be too into it because the art has aged quite a bit uh again backers has some solid action some really traditional action styles some lightning powers uh, some really clever protagonists that are that are a good duo and having a duo that's going around together is a lot of fun too um story wise there's an interesting story in the back of this uh arc wise there's some stuff that's not that great about this i'm gonna put it down in the c tier History's Strongest Disciple, Kenichi. A character that wants to get stronger no matter what, is kind of simple-minded. That's kind of the plotline of most of these stories. But the martial arts in this story are really interesting because he's learning from so many different masters and these are different things. Story is somewhat weak. I put the story probably around the C tier. Uh, the action I'm going to put up in the A tier. I think there's better action out there nonetheless. And the arcs all kind of work for me. I'm going to put it up in the B tier. You could argue, obviously, that we're I'm being a little um, liberal with where I'm putting stuff in some cases, but XXX Holic is in the same universe as uh, Tsubasa Chronicles, uh, and it's about basically ghosts and uh, dimensional transportation. He works for the Dimensional Witch. Uh, the story arc, it's not a very long series, but the story arc is very episodic, but that story arc that he leads to is heartbreaking heartwarming beautiful it's so story-wise it's way up there uh action-wise meh, meh, meh it's all right i don't think it's that great when it comes to that uh and when it comes to the arcs it's a very short series i'm gonna put it down in the c tier for that exact reason again none of these things are things you shouldn't read i think everything in this series are things that are worth checking out but i'd be comfortable if you said these were the first you read and this is where you went afterwards and then you went onwards uh, but don't forget, being part of the conversation for ongoing series is also a lot of fun. Shaman King is a perfectly mid shonen series. Uh, the shaman concept, pretty interesting. The the powers are so they lack so much variety. There's only like three abilities ish. The story is okay. The story is okay. The the how and uh, main character story. The English voiceover is actually quite good as well. If everyone watched an English dub of something, it's, it's a classic one, but it's pretty good. has a really annoying character in it. I'm going to put it down in the D tier. I really like Shaman King, but... Uh, kill the Witch. Uh, kill the Witch. Kill the Witch. Kill the Witch. Uh, interesting characters. Uh, beautiful action. Uh, looks really good in the anime version, but the manga is really nice as well. Uh, I don't find the story particularly compelling, and I don't find the characters particularly compelling. I'm going to put it in the C tier. 
Okay, zombie loan is pure D. I put it here because I was looking for something that was missing. Uh, there's gonna be stuff on this list that I'm completely missing, but I'm gonna put it in D tier. Uh, zombie loan is just like this girl ends up working with these gentlemen that are uh, like doing these. There's like the zombie flavor to the series. It's just, wow, it sounds like I haven't read it. Um, it's been a long time. High Q. Okay, so High Q has amazing action. I think it suffers from one of the same issues as Blue Lock is going to suffer here, is that it's taking too much of its time with some of its games. But I can't deny that the action is top tier. Uh, the storytelling of a protagonist that wants to chase after like a short king, uh, that is like the, the the jumper of the short kings, is is kind of compelling. It works for me. I think High Q is, uh, I think it's top tier in sports. I'm gonna put high Q in, in the A tier. Wow, it's it's almost like I'm putting. It's probably oh god. Uh, no, actually, I'm gonna put it in the B tier. It's really close. Like it's either a B or A, but I'm gonna put it in B. Um, Overdrive. Overdrive is a sports series about bike racing. Uh, which I mean, interesting. Uh, main character loser, but actually has a perfect physique to be a amazing bike racer. Uh, joins them. Honestly, this is the ugly stepchild of like Windbreaker on the uh, manga side, which I think is significantly better. Uh, but listen, it is what it is, man. Uh, I don't think it's as good. I'm gonna put Windbreak. I'm gonna put Overdrive down in the in the in the D tier. I think it's kind of skippable, though. I do enjoy it quite a bit. Yu Yu Hakusho is a traditional manga shonen, uh, very much that tournament arc feel. Good characters. Um, the main protagonist in particular is a really good character, honestly. He comes from... He's strong from the beginning, but it's kind of this idea that uh, he was this delinquent, but there was also kind of kind, so he gets a second chance, fights in a tournament. Uh, the tournament fighting is really strong. It's aged quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to put it in the B tier because I think it still stands the test of time as one of the great shonens ever made. Okay, Kuroko Basketball. So Kuroko is, I'd say action-wise, is probably one of the best sports manga that I think the anime is, the anime is perfection. Like, the art style is just ridiculous. It's so beautiful. Uh, Kuroko himself is kind of bland. Like, he's built to be bland. Literally, his skill is being bland. Uh, he's milk toast. But it's a really interesting concept uh, of this character that can erase his presence in the, in the game uh the storytelling in the in the games is good and also the characters all have their little stories but i don't think it has the same staying power as like haiku does for example i think the protagonists and the people in that team are more uh they're more important to each other well, at least they feel like they're more important to each other than kuroko does probably because of kuroko's personality particularly i'm gonna put kuroko in the c tier which is a bit strange but my list all right we're down to the last four guys so initial d is the only manga i can think of there might be others that i that i'm not aware of tell me down below if there you know of any but car racing manga that the <laughs> the artist that designed initial d in both the anime and the manga clearly was not a guy that was particularly talented at drawing people but the cars look amazing and the car racing looks amazing and fortunately it's a car racing manga so i'd say initial d is like top tier sports manga when it comes to the action of the series uh the storytelling there's some good story actually behind it behind just the racing of the getting access to the car um the rivals we use between the gangs the relationships there's quite a bit going on there and i think uh i think that's pretty darn good I'm gonna put initial D in the C's category because I think though, uh, uh, I gotta put it in B actually, yeah, because I considering what I just said. All right, Black Cat. We're going back old school. We got a um, thief that is a gunman, which is this badass mercenary that ends up working working with a group of people. Uh, a lot of fun. Loved the anime years ago. I don't know how it's aged, but I imagine it's aged quite a bit. But the anime is really good. Uh, the manga is on point. The art style is okay. Uh, from an action perspective, it's pretty solid. I put it in the, probably a B tier. 
Uh, Storyline over, let's say C tier. It's not a terrible story, but it's not perfection. And arc wise, it's not a terribly long series, so there's not that many arcs. I guess I'll put it in the C tier. Tokyo Ghoul. <laughs> Tokyo Ghoul has one of, in my opinion, the best season ones of a long running series in anime. Like, it has an amazing season one. Like, so good, so compelling jumps off a bridge after season one of the anime. Unfortunately, the manga is kind of the same. Differently, the manga is less bad than the way the anime does it. But the manga is is still such a mess of a series. So yeah, I'm gonna say story-wise, I really like the stuff that's going underground. They're the rivalry between the gangs. I wasn't completely involved, but it was still pretty good. Um, the action is top freaking tier, but that story is such a mess that I have to put it in the C tier. Lastly is Blue Lock, and I think Blue Lock, by the time it's done, will be one of the greatest sports manga ever created. It has amazing action, a great quest to be the best striker in the world and represent Japan, and like to learn from others, devour their abilities. It's such a good thing. The arcs are good. It suffers from having really long games and they're lasting chapter after chapter. So for people who are going to be binging it, I think it'll be fine. But for someone like me that reads it week to week, it's kind of frustrating that being said i'm gonna put this down in the a tier as my final a tier and there you have it guys you have my top 100 shonen well top shonen manga tier list tell me how much you think i'm insane down below what you think i forgot on this list because obviously i forgot a ton of manga uh and yeah shoot it my way in your comments down below and i will see you soon